Ogaden in the Horn of Africa, a place so little regarded by Europeans it scarcely earns a footnote in the history of their empires. When war broke out in the Ogaden, bemusement followed in Europe. Where was it? What was it? A desert scrubland. Why kill and be killed for a place like Filto? The answer is simple. For its Somali people, Filto is home. <laughs> Filto lies in the heart of the Sidamo district. Not desert, but rich grazing land for the camels, cattle and other livestock fundamental to the traditional Somali way of life. Yet, though Somali peopled throughout, it has until recently been ruled by a foreign power, Ethiopia. Until August 1977, when Filto's people, inspired by the now famous Western Somali Liberation Front, rose up to drive the foreigners from their land. In their defeat, the occupation army left little behind them but ruins. The Liberation Front is no new movement in the Ogaden. Only its title is recent. Its fighters and men like them have been resisting foreign domination ever since Ethiopia moved in to colonize the former British protectorate. The British have long gone, and the only Ethiopians left in Filter now are dead. The Ethiopian presence in much of the Ogaden started in the 1890s when Emperor Menelik aligned with Britain, Italy and France to carve the Horn of Africa into colonies and protectorates. Menelik's policy was expansion and his successor's rule in the Ogaden repressive and harsh. <laughs> Filto was, until August the 15th, an Ethiopian garrison town. Strategically located in the highlands, it acted as a military watchdog over activities in the larger community of Negele, 150 kilometers away. Its 1,300 Somali inhabitants were maintained in calculated underdevelopment, dependent for all urgent amenities on distant Negele. Now, free of restraint, they can at last taste self-reliance and develop the land that is rightly theirs. Under Ethiopian rule, Somali emancipation was non-existent. Public meetings of any kind were forbidden. This was the first time in living memory that the people of Filto had gathered openly to discuss their feelings about their own future. What their feelings on winning their freedom are is unmistakable.
more day, an Ethiopian airbase. Across bridges like this, Ethiopian armor could move swiftly to subdue the surrounding countryside. Godet was a military stronghold, yet it was at Godet that the first encounter, reconstructed here, took place between the army of Ethiopia and the lightly armed but fiercely determined Western Somali Liberation Front. Somali attack was a complete surprise. Defeated and demoralized, with no stomach to defend a land that wasn't theirs, Ethiopian troops surrendered by the score. What the Liberation Front had won, they were determined to hold. The land was theirs again. Straddling the fertile Shabeli River, Gode looks prosperous with its fine stone rest houses and Christian churches. But no Muslim Somali was offered one of these, only the elite of the ruler's air base. <laughs> Godet was a beacon to the Ogaden. Once lit, it was not to be stamped out. Least of all in the children, to whom freedom gave the promise of growth without fear in a world now based on equality. Western Somalia's countryside, with its rich vegetation, is ideal grazing for the herds of its nomad population. But these proud people were held in contempt by their rulers, who raided them at will and gave nothing to soften the harshness of their lives. <laughs> not one road was built in the region, not one elementary school, and grants for land improvement were quite unthinkable. Kalafo, another liberated township. Given minimal aid, this town could prosper, 
but no aid came from Addis Ababa. After years of being colonized, it still lacks piped water and medicine, roads and schools for its non-Ethiopian people. Yet, lying on the Shebele, it should sustain a thriving agriculture. Under Ethiopia, all that thrived here was disease. <laughs> The colonists have gone now. Their prisons, stone villas and churches all lie empty. From the bush to which they were so long consigned, the Somalis have come back into their own. Rich in both livestock and game, Chilabo lies at the very heart of the Ogaden. Since their arrival here in 1947 as part of a United Nations post-war settlement, the Ethiopians have done nothing to appease the Somalis' age-old dread of their tyranny. Stories abound here of livestock theft, beatings, imprisonment, rape and murder. <laughs> Chilabo and its neighboring townships were finally liberated on July the 13th, 1977, the people rallied to recruit new volunteers to carry the fight for freedom onwards. The liberationists' confidence and solidarity were spreading like wildfire throughout the Ogaden. weapons issue and training for local defense units was one vital priority. Another was education. There was only one elementary school in Chilabo, and places here had gone mainly to the children of the occupying army. Somali children had no chance even of literacy. Now, volunteer teachers from the Liberation Front took over, following the Somali slogan, Amabar, Amabaro. If you know, teach. If you don't know, learn. <laughs> Celebrations in Shilabo were not for liberation alone, but for the dawn of an age of enlightenment. Alki am puraya nu horse tegaya kole 
A pattern of teaching was building up inside the liberated zones. First, learn physically how to defend your gains. Then, learn mentally how to use the freedom. Oh, The grasslands of the Houd with their red sands have been immortalized in a thousand Somali poems. Wardat in the Houd won freedom on July the 27th, 1977, and its people sang the words of the Somali writer Ali Sugulle, written in the 60s. So long as the moon is not full, nor the star complete, so long as fate lingers on her travels, I will neither exult in my culture nor seek worldly goods. Ethiopian trenches in Wardar. And the ruins of the township itself after the liberation battle. Here again, the occupation forces were routed. With no incentive to hold them on foreign soil, they turned to the ruthless destruction of buildings and property before quitting the field and vast quantities of military equipment. Once again, schooling followed here in the wake of the liberators. Schooling came also to the movement's new recruits, this time in battlefield first aid. Is 
While the Liberation Front set to training its eager but very raw recruits, other social services moved in to consolidate the society around them. Medical attention was paid to Somali civilians, probably for the first time in their lives. For the first time in 30 years, Wader looked set for a return to settled community life. Ethiopian remains from the battle for Gabridahar. After three days of bitter fighting, the township was freed on July 24, 1977. <laughs> Gabri Dahare was the final rift in the Ethiopian defense line across the Somali Ogaden. <laughs> The Ethiopians had always treated their Somali subjects at best as third-class citizens or spies, at worst as subhuman. Now at last someone was treating them as people with the same rights as everyone else. <laughs> Swollen with new recruits, the liberators moved on from Gabri Dahare to other still occupied zones. <laughs> Aware, also in the Haud, was annexed by Ethiopia in 1922 after the defeat of the Somali national hero, Mohamed Abdele Hassan, called by the British the Mad Mullah. When Aware was liberated, its Muslim Quranic schools were immediately reopened after long years of enforced closure under Ethiopia's Christian rule. <laughs> Once again, in Aware, the people's delight in their newfound freedom is unmistakable. These dances are called danto, traditional Somali dances of joy. These young recruits were scarcely born when the last part of the Ogaden, the reserve area around Dagafur, was handed to Ethiopia by post-war Britain. With that, the subdivision of Somali lands was complete, despite violent protests from their people. Men like Maktal Dahir, who saw it for what it was, the cynical betrayal of a people to the dictates of imperial policy.
For 30 years, the Somalis of Darfur had had no schooling save in the Amharic of their rulers. Liberated on August the 1st, the people rallied eagerly to learn and rediscover their native tongue. The people of Dagabur, as of all the Ogaden, made a solemn pledge to carry the fighting forward and defend their hard-won freedom to the death. <laughs> the colorful scar plan between Jigjiga and Harar marks the road to Harar. This is Jinnah Sane, fertile land, ideal for agriculture. 91 years ago, Ethiopia seized the area. But on September the 19th, 1977, it won its independence back. The small town of Jinatsane lies at the foot of the escarpment. Its people make their living by farming and raising livestock. Although the ground is fertile, Ethiopia's rule did little to help or develop the region. Life is still hard here. Maize and millet are the only staple crops, grown still on a subsistence basis by methods as old as the surrounding hills themselves. Yet, with little more than education and a sense of purpose, Jinatsane could become a place of wealth feeding not just itself, but also the countryside around. Only one crop earns actual revenue for Jinatsane, and that is pat, a leaf plant widely chewed as a soporific. From farms such as this, cut is harvested and sold in markets throughout the Horn of Africa. Since they use it as much as their Somali neighbors, even the Ethiopians did not discourage its widespread cultivation. The Ethiopian route from the hill forts of Jinatsane was total. Huge quantities of abandoned armor would go to swell the liberation arsenal. Jigjiga, a crucial city. Ceded to Ethiopia in 1945, Somali Jigjiga was at last liberated on September the 16th, 1977. Its loss was a decisive blow to the Ethiopians. Of its garrison, no less than half were killed or taken prisoner.
of its weaponry, masses lay intact for reuse in the battle for total liberation. <laughs> Not only the tank base in the Marder Pass, but also the vital radar installation on Fik Mountain were destroyed. For the lightly equipped Liberation Front, Jigjiga was a triumph. <laughs> Standing at the foot of the Karamada Pass, Jigjiga had been thought impregnable. Cowed by the presence of its military garrison, the local Somali population had suffered injustice and indignity here for over 30 years, patiently hoping for the wheel to turn. When their chance came to rise and destroy their oppressors, they seized it with both hands. Within days of its liberation, the town and its markets sprang to bustling life. Never again would foreign oppression rule here. Willing hands reached everywhere to rebuild for the future and cover the scars of the past. Hargeza, inside the Somali Democratic Republic, was bombed by Russian MiG aircraft in September 1977. The pilots, allegedly, were Cuban. Their targets, civilians, mosques, schools, hospitals, homes. Nor was the Republic at war. Since the rupture of Somali-Soviet relations in November 1977, Somalia has revealed to the world the cynical opportunism of Russia and her allies. Never concealing her own moral and material support for the freedom fighters of the Ogaden, Somalia is still not at war. But her army is ready. And if forced, she will fight, on her own if need be, to preserve her integrity and her peoples. <laughs>
legales. 